Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Well, we are out of town again visiting the in-laws in Connecticut. If you guys remember the last time we were up here, we went to go visit Jake from Dude Ranch DIY. He is kind of my home away from home. Uh, we mentioned before my in-laws live in a 55 and older community and there's not a whole lot to do here. So when we come visit, I usually try to schedule a day to head over to Jake's and get some uh, firewood therapy in. And so that's what we're headed over there to do. I got a small little gift as a token of my appreciation for Jake. We'll show you that when we get there. But I think Jake has a new toy that we're gonna get to play with today that I'm pretty excited about. And I believe he is too. So we'll catch back up with you when we get there. All right, so I figured we'd get this out of the way here oh. before we get to the meat and potatoes of the video. <laughs> but this is the uh, custom laser engraved sign I made for you. Oh man. For the wood yard here. And like this I said- This is awesome. I appreciate you letting me come here and get some firewood therapy in when I'm in visiting the in-laws out of Absolutely. town. Absolutely. Anytime, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, I've been wanting a sign for a while to put up there, but I wasn't sure, you know, what I wanted. And this, this is really cool. So Little what is this? Cherry? Cherry. Okay. Yeah. Now it was kind of rushed. I didn't have a chance to get it clear coated like I usually do. Uh, so I, this literally came off the engraver about 10 minutes before we left for an eight hour <laughs> drive to get here. Uh, so you'll still need to clear coat it, but yeah, uh, you said you're going to hang it under the roof here. Yeah. I'm thinking I could probably hang it on the back side so that it's not hanging down from the top side where the machines come in. If we hang it off the back, you know, it'll be undercover and out of the weather, out, out of the, the weather and everybody will know what they're watching. <laughs> yeah. So the, the meat and potatoes of this video is Jake just got a new toy here, which is a Good. Kubota U35 mini excavator. And, uh, over the last two years, my affinity for excavators has grown exponentially here. Now we have a six ton mini and you got a, which is a, a six ton machine. It's about 13,000 pounds. This mm -hmm. is a three and a half ton. It's a little more than half the size of my machine, but you know, excavators are expensive. Um, I got a screaming, yeah. I got a screaming deal on mine when I got mine. And I think you said you got a pretty good deal on this one as well. I think so. But for the average everyday guy that's <clears throat> looking at getting an excavator, I kind of want to find out if a three and a half ton machine will do everything you need it to do in the firewood yard that my, that I use my six ton for. So that's what we're going to try out here today is see what this little three and a half ton can do. Yeah, let's do it. I'm, I'm curious to, to get your feedback on it because I am totally green with machines like this, but I figured, you know, investing in myself and, you know, worst comes to worst, we could just always sell it down the road. I'm also curious to run a Kubota machine because everybody always talks about how smooth Kubota hydraulics are. And uh, I wanna see if I notice any difference between my Hyundai and a Kubota. Now, granted, again, this is a smaller machine, smaller hydraulic pump, I'm assuming smaller motor. So I'm not really comparing apples to apples, but I wanna get a feel for how I like the controls as well. All right, let's fire it up, get to it. Yep. Yeah, this thing definitely tracks faster than my machine, or maybe it just feels like it because it's smaller. Definitely feel the track speed slow down when you go to uh, move your boom and stick, but that's to be expected. My machine does that too. Oh, I forgot. I gotta... That's the one thing I don't like about Kubota that I've seen other people talk about is you have to turn your thumb on every time you get in and out of the cab. This isn't the biggest log, but did everything we needed it to to bring a log over here, and now we'll be able to buck this log up, up off the ground and uh, not have to get your chain in the dirt. All right, so if you guys follow Dude Ranch DIY on YouTube, you know he runs a steel 500i fuel injected chainsaw, and you've got some aftermarket parts and pieces on this as well, right? Yeah, I have an Egan straight shot exhaust and a Max Flow air filter. That's it, it hasn't been ported or anything. So I've got this Husqvarna 585 that I was very impressed with the first time I ran it and I kind of wanted to bring this. And since Jake's let me try out his Mini, I thought I'd let him try out the 585 and see how it compares to the Steel 500. Yeah. So we're gonna give these a try today too and just do a little bit all around testing here in the wood yard. Sounds good. 
All right, so our test log here is gonna be a shag bark hickory and it's gonna measure 17 across at the narrower cross section of the tree and about 19 inches on the fat part of the cross section of the tree. You're gonna to have to take these time trials with a grain of salt because neither one of us put a brand new chain on the saw. So really we're not able to compare apples to apples with the same sharpness of each chain. Kind of just doing this test for fun to see how they each run and, and which one looks like it might be a faster saw. So what Adam is, is going to try and do here is something that I was curious as a new excavator operator and that's that the curl function of the bucket is a lot stronger than the thumb hydraulics and I was wondering that if it was okay to curl the bucket and just have it retract the thumb and Adam said it's not. Ideally you would want to be curling in your bucket and retracting your thumb simultaneously and he was saying that he still has trouble at times even on his machine where he drops logs because you're doing one faster than the other. So guys, what I was saying is that we use a mingo marker to mark out the logs, and when you have the thumb and the bucket facing down, you can't get this mingo marker in there. But with the gap between the thumb and the bucket facing horizontal, I can take the marker. Run right down the log, and now we can cut. <coughs>
All right, so you got your four baskets here filled up. Clearly the uh, excavator is working out well for you here in the wood yard. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that this worked. This is really the first time we're, we're actually like using it, um, f especially for firewood. And be between the three of us, I mean, Chris was on the splitter. I was cutting, obviously you were running the machine because you have the most experience. And that was like a well-oiled machine. Yeah, I think if uh, if you're gonna be cutting and splitting at the same time, you gotta have three people, one in the excavator, one on a saw, and one on the splitter. Now, when it's just the two of you here, you'll probably have one in the excavator, one cutting, and you'll just build up a big pile of rounds, and then you guys will stop cutting and start splitting, right? Right, something like that, or you know, we'll just stockpile a bunch of rounds, and then it's easy enough for me to just come out single-handedly and split them because the Easton made you know makes it so easy with the box wedge and the pullback arm and stuff. Right. Um, now it's basically gotten to the point where the cutting is the most laborious part of it, but. The excavator takes out a lot of that extra labor. Cutting cutting with an excavator holding a log up out of the dirt is a game changer. Yeah. So, all right, so the three and a half ton mini, I mean, the whole point of this video is to talk about a three and a half ton versus six ton. Clearly a three and a half ton will do everything you need for firewood. So why would you spend the extra money on a six ton like what we have? Well, we've got 44 acres, so we use ours for a lot more than just firewood. We've got French drains, trenches, dirt moving, grading, uh, pushing down trees back in the woods. Uh, plus we have a sawmill. And when you have a sawmill, saw logs are typically a lot bigger than firewood poles. And I think we've got an example of a, a saw log sitting over there. I kind of want to see if this three and a half ton machine would pick it up. Yeah, that's a, uh, a nice Let's go take a look piece. at it. You have a tape measure on you? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a red maple log and it was infested with ambrosia beetle. So it gives it the classic ambrosia maple, you know, spotting or bird's eye, some people call it. And it's a lot more prevalent when you make a fresh cut on it. But this log is roughly to a nice clean face. We're at eight foot, eight inches about. And on the big side, we are looking about 34 inches. And on the small end, we're looking about 26 inches. I'm gonna throw that on a log weight calculator right now and I'll put how much this log weighs based on that calculator. But let's fire up the machine and see if it can pick it up. This is something that I feel like would be borderline my machine being able to pick it up. I mean, if this was a 12 foot log, it would be borderline. I think eight foot mine machine would do it no problem, but I'll be curious if your three and a half ton can pick it up. And we were talking, it's not only weight, but you've got a smaller bucket, a smaller thumb. So being able to grip and, and get a good bite on a log that's 34 inches in diameter could be tough too. Right, I'm thinking that's gonna be the biggest issue with it because I did move this log here with my tractor albeit it was taking everything that that tractor had to get it here and it was about an inch off the ground but uh, i think the biggest thing here is just going to be getting a grip on it like you said fancy footwork How big your bucket and thumb are, I think that's about the only way you can pick this log up and move it with this machine is to pinch it against your blade. So that's why I have a six ton machine is because this log here would be, I would love to put this log on my sawmill with a machine this size. I don't think I'd be able to get a big enough bite on it. I think it would pick it up. If you could, if you could somehow put a strap on it, I think you could definitely pick it up. I think it's got the power. You just can't get a good grip on it. How, how far up off the ground 
eight inches? Yeah, it'll pick it up. Yeah. I'm actually mad you're gonna be cutting this log up with firewood. No, well it's it's there for the mill. Oh is it? Someday. Okay. A boy can dream, right? Good. <laughs> Let's see if I can tip your new machine. All right, so I was pretty impressed with how far this little machine will reach. So we thought we'd get the tape measure out and see just exactly how far from the track. Here, I'll help hold that. Go ahead. Out to the tips of the teeth or the center of the log there. So center of the log, we're looking at 13 foot, four inch. 13 foot, four inches. The teeth are 14 foot exactly. 14 foot exactly to the tips of the teeth. So if you're digging a trench, you can get 14 feet out away from the machine if you're trying to pick up a log about 13 six. That's pretty impressive. I'll, when I get back home, I'll have to do a similar test and see what the difference is between a three and a half ton and a six ton is. So another thing we were just talking about was, you know, how much a mini excavator may or may not tear up the ground you're working on because it is a track machine. So I told Jake, we give him a quick little tutorial here on how to do jump turns. So, all right, so what you want to do Put your which way do you want to turn you want to turn this way. this way so i always say you want to put your bucket at let's say 10 p.m okay so if straight above your blade is noon 10 p.m now push it down lift the front of your tracks up off the ground there you go that just you just have to get it up just enough okay so now if you wanted to turn to the left, your right track would need to go forward, your left track would need to go back, but at the same time, you wanna swing your house and push that way to the right. That's pretty much all there is to it. So the reason now, if you look, you really haven't torn up the ground too much here because you're getting this, the whole front part of your track up off the ground and the back is the only part that's actually digging into the ground. I'm surprised I did that first shot. Yeah. Well, and the reason that you kind of want to work 10 to two from where you're picking up at is if you just go all the way over here, you're only going to be picking up this side of the machine. You need to be picking up the front side or your blade side of your machine. Yeah. That way you're getting both tracks up off the ground. And then you're really at that point, just spinning on the back part of your tracks. Right. Which is very little ground contact. Yeah. But yeah, not only is it gonna tear up the ground a lot less, it's a lot easier on your final drives too because you've got less friction on the ground when you've got one track spinning forwards and the other track spinning back. The only friction you have is, you know, the last two foot on the track. So it's easier for the track or for the final drive to spin the track. All right, so there you go. That is the Kubota U35-4 three and a half ton machine. You guys have seen me use my six ton machine on the channel. I think this is going to be an excellent machine for what you're doing here with mostly firewood. Uh, you said you got a couple of projects here. You have four acres. You've got right. some smaller ditching projects you need to do and things like that. But yeah, and um, I'm looking to learn. Like I'm brand new to this, so to go out and buy a big machine that it might be overkill. I wanted to start smaller, and I was you know limited to the equipment that I have to haul it around. And that's the other thing. You're not just going to be using this here. You want to take this out on jobs, right? right. That's my intention is to take it out and, you know, hopefully make some money with it. Um, so between, you know, my trailer and the trucks that I have, I wanted to make sure that I was going to be legal um, hauling it around. That's the downside to a machine like mine that's a six ton is you either have to have a CDL and a three or a one ton pickup truck and a heavy duty trailer or you can pay somebody $150 an hour for trucking to move your machine around. And by the time you start doing stuff like that, that's really eating into your profit on the jobs, just paying for the trucking to get the machine there to do the work. 
Uh, so, I mean, a, a three and a half ton machine like you guys saw here today will do a, any log that you have here in this firewood pile, it's gonna pick them up. Yeah. Um, if you are running a sawmill, an excavator is nice because you can just set them down on the sawmill real gently. A skid loader, you can pick up heavier logs and maneuver them a little bit better, but you, you don't know if you can really set them down quite so gently. So yeah, I mean, it's quite have that finesse. Yeah, the excavator is really just <clears throat> gentle with picking stuff up and setting it down and just plucking it. It's like a claw machine at the movie theater, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think you made the right choice here going with a three and a half ton machine. I think you're going to enjoy this. And maybe at some point you might decide you want something bigger, but I think this is right. going to do everything you need to do. Any of you guys out there that you do a lot of firewood or stuff like that and you're looking for a machine like this, I don't think you necessarily need a six ton mini. I think a three and a half ton would do most of what you needed to do but um, if you want to see more of this size machine running go check out jake's channel dude ranch diy does a lot of firewood um what else so i'm a we do a lot of tree work firewood um just property maintenance and stuff licensed insured arborists so we go out and climb trees take them down removals stuff like that so if you're interested you know from seeing the tree standing to getting processed here in the wood yard um, Dude Ranch DIY is a good place to watch it, you know, from, from trunk to in the totes. <laughs> All right, well, once again, Jake, thank you for having me over here. It's always nice when I come yeah. visit the in-laws to be able to get away and come do some stuff that I'm familiar with from back home. If you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.